Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Biruchim Abayim to everybody. Today, Tuesday, the 16th day of Shevat, corresponding to the 18th day of January. Today's class, graciously sponsored by Mr. A. Bilema of Yosef Franco, Ben Barbara, Rachel Franco, Bad Eileen, Ishak Ben Miriam Hillary, Yesha Ben Miriam Hillary, Yesha, among all of the Holim of Am Israel. Additionally, today's class is dedicated for the Refua Shelema of Yosef Simcha Ben Sara Hana. Additionally, today's class dedicated Le'ilu Nishmat Sally Sarina Bat Reina, but her dear family. And today's class also graciously sponsored Le'ilu Nishmat. Devora Feige Bat Shemuel by Michael and Jamie Ben Melech. It is on that those who are in the Refua Shelema list have a Refua Shelema, and those who are in the Eluy Nishmat list, then the Shema have an Aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehakol Nihiyah Bidbaro. Okay, so today, no singing in the class. I got a lot of compliments about yesterday. Beautiful, unbelievable. Thank God. Thank God. Encore, I give you the recording later. Very good. So today, I'm going to be ahead of, of tomorrow. And simply because tonight and tomorrow is the your side of Rabbi Chaim Palachi, the author of the Moed Kol Hai, and uh, over 70 books in all levels of Torah. And he writes a fascinating uh, checklist, I like to call it, a specific exercises to do during the weeks of the Shobavim. We know that these weeks between Shemot and Mishpatim, and this year, including Teruma and Tetzaveh, we are into eight weeks in which a person has the power to remedy mistakes done through the Berit Milah. I don't have to go further. I think everybody's mature audience. It's not the first time I'm gonna speak about it. But let's talk now remedies. What can I do? A person made this Avon, doesn't matter when. Let's read some of the suggestions that Rabbi Haim Palachi brings. I already mentioned some things maybe two weeks ago when we mentioned about mikveh, if possible, tikkun aklali, the 10 chapters, thank you, the 10 chapters of Tehillim, which are earmarked specifically for the spiritual repair of this transgression. But let's read now additional suggestions which Honestly speaking, they should be already part of everyday life. What we're going to say now is not something that we never heard of or we were not supposed to do it. These are things that we were supposed to do. Sometimes it's a possibility throughout life. Sometimes may never happen. But some of them are constantly present in our life. So it says, number one on the list, vidui. Vidui means what? Confession. Meaning to say that a person, and this is between you and God. You don't have to post it in Instagram or a TikTok video or in Facebook to say, I did this sin. God forbid. God forbid. This is between you and a Kadosh Baruch Hu. So it says, number one, we do it. Recognize the mistakes made, which I don't know if any of us can say our hands are clean. Okay? And the person confesses directly to Hashem in this matter. Somebody sent me an email the other day. It says, Rabbi, I need help. I can't control myself. That was the email I got. I listened to one of your classes, 
in itorah.com, I believe, and he says, you were talking about me in the class. I said, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you live. I don't know which community you belong to. I'm not even able to decipher your name through your email address. Many times, people have their name as the email address, right? I said, I don't know none of the above. He says, what do I do? I am not able to control myself. You know what that means, right? Yes. I'm gonna have to explain. All mature audience, Hazaku Baruch. So I told him a few things that we're gonna read now. But I did say to him that when God forbid he is tempted to make this sin manually, he should pray to Hashem on that moment. Like God help me not to commit this transgression. That's one formula. Another formula is that a person, I think this is brought down in the name of the Benish Hai, that a person, how do I say this? Virtually imagines God's name in front of him. Yod Ke Vav Ke. And then you're supposed to put the vowels under each letter, the same vowels as the word ira, O, A W E. So you put under the hiri, the the the, the yod, the hiri, the he, the sheva, the kamatz under the vav, and the he without vowels, because in the word ira which means fear of God, so to speak, there is no vowel in the final letter. That's what the Benish Hai says. And believe me, you don't have to wait to put this thought, God forbid, when you are at the verge of committing a sin, especially of this nature. Even when you see the Yeser Aram is warming up in your body, put this thought in your mind that Hashem should give you the strength to overcome this temptation. Another thing that I ask him is, do you learn Torah on a regular basis? He says, I used to. And what happened? He says, no, one thing led to the other. And I told him tactfully that the transgression that he was honest enough to say that he commits has this side effect. God forbid it creates a distance from Hashem. It brings down the spirit of the person and it brings down the emotional state of mind of the person. Because the fact that he's taking a step back away from Hashem, so holiness and blessing departs. And then he tells me, you are so right. I don't have a job. I sleep most of the day. I don't have the desire to live or to function as a human being. So I said, you are exactly what's written in the holy books. I didn't say it so rude. I said it in a very elegant and tactful way because I already know that this fellow he may be watching the class now, but I don't know who he is, okay? That this fellow may be, you know, a, a, a experiencing exactly the side effects that was written about this transgression. So comes in behind Palachi, and it says, one thing that you should be careful with is to say Keriyat Shema properly. The Shema, I need to know, I need to say to know this. The Shema, every word of the Shema, not only it connects itself to the 248 positive commandments of the Torah, but the Shema corresponds to the 248 body parts that a male's body has. And the Neshama by itself also has 248 compartments and every mitzvah 
connects to a different part of our neshama. That's why the area between the legs of the person, from a Kabbalistic per perspective, how is it called? It's called yesod, foundation, the foundation of holiness. Do not worry. Hopefully in two weeks from now, we are on a Sunday afternoon, we are going to be making a collective prayer for this sin. That not only will take care of the physical sin, but will take care of the mental, mental, the vision, the mouth, and the throat. Come Sunday, you'll see it in action. You have nothing to worry about. It's like a mini Yom Kippur. Stay tuned. We'll let you know when. Okay? Let's go further. Check the CCOs that you wear. Make sure that the CCOs are kasher. The question is, what has to do the CC being kasher with this type of spiritual challenge? So we need to understand what the CC represents. The Zohar Kadosh calls the talit or makif, a light of godliness that surrounds this person. If the man, the person, God forbid, is connected to this transgression, and I'm not talking a, a case, God forbid, or a sporadic night accident, yeah. but we're talking about somebody who, God forbid, commits this avon. So it means that the holiness of Hashem is not surrounding him. And one of the reasons could be is because the sisid are not kasher. And according to our holy books, the talet and the sisid katan that a person wears is a bulletproof for the neshama gives the person the strength to overcome the urge of acting in ways which are not suitable for a Yehudi to act. Not only that, and if you look in the Shema, at the end of the Sisit, the Pasuk says, Don't follow your heart, don't follow your eyes, that you act in an immoral way. What are you supposed to do when you say this sentence in the Keriyat Shema? You're supposed to kiss the Sisit and put it over your eyes. Why? To purify the eye of the person. Not only the Avon can be done through the hands or through the body, but sometimes the sins can be done through the eyes. That's why there is something called in Hebrew what? Shemirat Ha'enayim. The protection of the eyes of the person. So you take the Sisid, which also, 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 the Sisid, it's a good protection against anger. Against anger. Why? The Pasuk says, Benatenu al Sisid kanaf. Petil techelet. Kanaf means the corner of the talet that has the sisiot. The word kanaf and the word kaas, anger, have exactly the same numerical value. So somebody told me a while back, Rabbi, I wear sisit katan and I still get angry. So he said, imagine if you don't wear sisit katan, how much more angrier you will become. <laughs> Okay, and that's the reason why uh, the Tzitzit de Lacha writes that before you're put on the talet, you're supposed to check the strings of the Tzitzit. Make sure that you have four corners with the Tzitzit. Each corner has the eight strings. Now, halachically, if you check the Tzitzit today, what many people do is 
that when they finish praying in the morning, they check the sisiot, and then they put the talet into the koracha. So what happens? Nobody use usually, nobody uses your talet after you put it away in your koracha or in your locker, okay? So tomorrow morning, you rely on the checking of yes, of today in the morning, and this way you don't have to check it again. Additionally, it says, the concept of tefillin. But what part of the tefillin is he referring to? You'll be surprised. The wrapping of the tefillin, it says. Be careful in making sure that when you finish the tefillin, don't just shove it into the koracha, but wrap it with your hands. And it says, why? Because since part of the sin that a man may have made was through the hands, so you take the hands that carry the transgression of Zera and you use it now to do a mitzvah of honoring the tefillin. Fascinating Hidush that he says. Belichrocha tefillin hu tikun gadol de kosher beyadav hefech in plain English it means you commit, not you, God forbid, but that person committed a transgressions with the hands. Now the hands are stained, spiritually speaking. I created a disentitation or a disconnect, that's a proper word. You created a disconnect between you and Hashem. Now use your hands to reconnect with the ship. And how? Thank you. Thank you. Now, no how? Rush. No rush. No rush. <laughs> now, how do you call the concept of tefillin? Kesher. Kesher shel tefillin. The binding or the knot of the tefillin. You know how do you say connection in Hebrew? Kesher. So you disconnected through this transgression, no, you no. connecting through the mitzvah of tefillin. So far, so good? So far, it's stuff that we are doing every day. But now we're adding more meaning to what we are saying. The next one. Shilole abed afilu amen echal Make sure not to lose to answer, Amen. That's simple. We're supposed to say 90 times a day, Amen. It's not difficult. Amen. If you pray three times a day in the synagogue, it's easy. If you don't pray, then you got to make up. Let's continue. Also, when it comes to Birkat Hamazon, Hazan et akol. Mitoch hasidur. It's a very known halacha. When you do Birkat Amazon, should be said from the sidur, the prayer book. Ube kol ram. You have to hear what you are saying and have the basic concentration. Meaning to say, don't do anything else when you say Birkat Amazon. The halacha adds one more component. Birkat Amazon with happiness. Birkat Amazon with happiness. And it says clearly in the Alaha that a person that is meticulous in reciting Birkat Amazon properly guaranteed that food will never be lacking from their table. Unbelievable. Unbelievable return. Can you imagine that you know that food always be available on your table? There are no guarantees on that. Let's go further. So here I have a note from the past that says eating about the breadcrumbs of bread. You heard of this? To eat the breadcrumbs 
And the basic reason is that the drops of zeta, to a certain extent, had a small, has the breadcrumbs that a person leaves on the table. In the Hasidic, in the Hasidic world, they eat the breadcrumbs as a segula for parnasa. I don't know the source of that, but I do know the source of tikkun of the berit. My maharonim, my maharonim hova. We know this halacha, and I will say one thing, because I spoke geared mostly to the men's. For the ladies, they become partners with their husbands in the mitzvah of family purity. So when husband and wife uh, okay, I'm getting so many messages non-stop. I don't know why, because the phone is in do not disturb mode. I don't want to interrupt the recording. So I'm trying not to look at the message and keep talking. Anyways, so my maharonim, so going back, so in the concept of the tikkun of the shobabim, although most emphasis it's made on the men's department, on the level of personal holiness with the berit milah, but needless to say that the ladies in the family purity department, knows as the Harata Mishpaha, also carries a certain level of partnership with the husband in making sure that they are not only married in a Jewish way, but also living as husband and wife in a Jewish way. That means that as long as it applies, the wife goes to the mikveh only when it applies, once you reach a certain age or certain physical condition, the halakha of Tarat HaMishpacha no longer applies really, but as long as the age and the monthly occurrence happens, it's imperative that we keep the suitable halakhic distance. So, uh, the next one was, I said, my Maharonim. What's the idea of my Maharonim? Although today's class is not my Maharonim, but we know that my Maharonim was established by our holy rabbis to purify the impurities of the finger, of the fingers. Even though the original source of the Gemara is about to avoid blinding of the person's eyes in the event that they touch the salt of Sedom, that is on the Gemara level. But today, if we ask someone, where is Sedom in the map? Do you know where Sedom is? No. Don't tell me South Beach. <laughs> okay, I know that. Let's see. What? what? Let's see. It's close to Israel, towards the south of Israel. But really, we cannot pinpoint on the salt that we have. The closer to Sedom is Himalayan salt, from the Himalayas. Okay, most of the salt, it's local. Okay? So, nevertheless, from a spiritual perspective, the concept of my Maharonim still applies. Why? Because, yes, it has to do to a certain extent for the reasons that I mentioned, but from a deeper concept, the hands of the person have the power of being a transport for holiness, for godliness, or God forbid, the opposite. For that reason, in our Jewish way of life, washing our hands is not something sporadic. It's something that guaranteed to happen several times a day. From the moment that a person wakes up in the morning till the moment that a person gets ready to pray, a person takes a shower, a person comes out of the mikveh, a person took a haircut, a person draws blood, a person cuts the nails, a person goes to the cemetery. God forbid, all these scenarios require the washing of the hands. Besides eating bread, that we need to do in a tilat yadai. 
and there are different way, different ways of how we wash our hands for each scenario. But that's not today the class of the washing of the hands. But when it comes to my maharonim, there is another reason why we do my maharonim. Because when a person eats, you eat with your hands. What does that mean? Yes, you use a fork, you use a knife, you use a spoon. So your hands are the conducive agent to the food. The connection between the person's mouth and the food is the hand. Let's say that there is a bagel there. You don't want to go to the table, open your mouth, and bite the bagel. Correct? That's not the way normal people eat. Normal people, how they eat? With the hand. So what happens? That hand can help you eat in a way that is proper, respectful, suitable, and holy. Not only Berachot, because saying Berachot before and after, we already learned the importance of that. So let's say that a person did say Berachot, and the person has the top level of Kashrut or whatever food the person is eating. But guess what? We start eating in a holy way. We start eating slowly. But as the meal progresses, perhaps we start eating like Yaakov Abino, but we end up eating like Isam. Meaning to say, you eat more. You don't eat because you're starving, you eat before because the food is tempting. Meaning to say, the food becomes not my friend, but my enemy. I'm not looking at your plate. Don't worry. Okay. Let me see your plate. Looks good. Good. No, 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 no. For him. It's the second half. Wow. Okay, it's fine. As long as you eat less than three bagels, you're okay. <laughs> I think three bagels is too much, but that's a whole different <laughs> issue. So one bagel is fine. And you put tomatoes and you put the vegetables that makes it healthy, right? Beautiful. Anyways, but once the person eats in a way that is not conducive to holiness, now the hands, they need purification. Because the hand was the middleman or the agent between me and the food. So what do we do? We do my maharonim to remove the spiritual impurity that lingers around the fingertips. And that's why we do my maharonim. And that's why it's called my maharonim hova. What's the meaning of the word hova in English? Most of us will say mandatory. You know what's the deeper meaning of the word hova? It's one of the names of impurity. Mm. One of the names of tum'ah, it's called hova. So when you do maima haronim, you remove that level of inappropriate consumption of food, even though it's kosher. Even though you said Berachot before and after. But if we turn from Yaakov to eat like Esav, Esav was a vacuum cleaner. Esav didn't believe in leftovers. If it's in front of me, I have to eat it. The person needs to learn how to draw the line. You know, there was a great rabbi who established a one minute fast day. Have you heard of this? You fast for one minute, it's like you fasted an entire day. How do you do that? You, that only works when you are tempted to eat food. Let's say that in front of you, there is something. 
very delicious, very tasty. And the food now is talking to you. Eat me, eat me. True. What do you do? You take your food, you put it in front of you, and then you don't eat it. You decide when to eat. You decide when to eat. That self-control, self-restraint, it's like you fasted one day. I don't see what it says here. Okay, I don't want to go too deep. But that self-control, you are in charge. You bend your temptation. No one is immune to this. In the sense of male or female. That's why the Lecha writes that my Maharonim is also for ladies. Not for men only. Additionally, it says in the Etra Tzon that a person who has sefekot of emunah, meaning that the emunah is shaky to reinforce in my maharonim. Why? Because my maharonim is a takana established by our rabbis. And when a person neglects a rabbinical concept, it directly affects the emunah in Hashem. We learned it from last week's Torah portion. Ba'ya'aminu ba'ashem u'moshe abdo. The Torah puts next to each other emunah in Hashem and emunah in the hachamim. How do you get emunah through the hachamim? By having emunah in Hashem. And how do you get emunah in Hashem? By connecting with the hachamim. Once the person connects himself to the hachamim, to the Torah, that gradually builds up the emunah battery in the person's soul. That's what it says in the Etra Tzon, written by your rabbi. It's written black and white. Yes. Let's do one more. Because number 10, and tomorrow we'll continue. Shemirat Shabbat Keil Chato. Part of the takana or tikkun, I should say, of the spiritual repair is observing Shabbat properly, ul anego, and to celebrate the Shabbat kefi yecholto, according to your means. What does it mean? Yes, aonet, the Gemara explains that there are different parameters or requirements that a person must fulfill in order to observe Shabbat properly. Food is not on top of the list. Food is not on top of the list. When the food department comes on Shabbat, even if you did something minimal, different, and you had the kavana, I'm doing this in honor of Shabbat, you call. You don't have to have four course meal on a Shabbat. You don't have to have maza and seven salads and chicken and brisket and meat and, and four types of desserts, okay? All that is beautiful, I'm not against that. But from a halakhic perspective, from a Talmudic angle, as long as the person did something special, you are okay. That's on the bottom of the list. Then you have how you dress in honor of Shabbat. Or the opposite. You should not dress on Shabbat the way you dress on a weekday. So on a weekday you dress with a polo shirt and a pair of pants. Shabbat Kodesh comes nicer. Suit. Jacket, tie, bad tie, shirt, bad tie. okay, whatever. Some people cannot stand the tie because they feel choked. But at least you come to the shul 
presentable, clean. Another concept, observing Shabbat, we know this. What do we speak about on Shabbat? The topics of conversation. Not only Torah. Torah is the positive aspect of the Shabbat. But avoid talking about business on Shabbat or future planning on Shabbat. That's another pasuk. Mimeso hefsecha bedaver davar. Shiloye diburcha shel Shabbat ke diburcha shel Chod, the Gemara says. The topics of conversation on Shabbat cannot be the same topic of conversation during the week. So you may say, but Rabbi, I don't speak about business during the week. I only speak about business during Shabbat. Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. It's a big one. That's a big problem. Okay? The idea is that Shabbat will disconnect from any scenario that can hinder our connection with Akadosh Baruch Hu. Even politics. In this ma ah? Even politics. Politics sometimes could become a Shalom Bayit issue. Mm. Politics sometimes can become the source of mahloket. So I will say avoid politics as well. Mm -hmm. If you ask my opinion, I'll say to avoid it because sometimes people may get passionate mm -hmm. and they may start saying things yeah. and you don't agree yeah. and you don't react properly, Correct. right? I've seen it in action yeah. Yeah. that many times I had to step up to the plate when certain conversations were going on, I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a wonderful discussion, but you know what? We continue this after Shabbat. Guess what? After Shabbat, nobody called, nobody came. Nobody said, Rabbi, we need to continue the politics topic. Okay? True, by the way. True, but this is what the Yeser does. You have to understand. I'm going to close the book now because I do have a Spanish class in a few minutes. But via itorah.com as well. Uh, I'll tell you, the Yeser Ara doesn't need to be sophisticated and innovative in how he tries to create a deterrence in our connection with Hashem. He's a jack of all trades. To some people he'll come through politics. To some people will come through future planning. To some people will come for an interesting business deal or even the leasing of a car. You start saying, oh, I like your car. How much are you paying? That's the Yeserara opening the door. Now I'm running the show. Oh, you're paying $4.99 for that? But I heard that, the, that Lexus had a special the other day, $4.29. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's the good old days. Now it's six ninety nine, five ninety nine. <laughs> scary, scary. Now you told me four twenty nine. I'm thinking, oh, four twenty nine. Where is the deal? Which model? Is a hybrid or regular? You understand? That's how the yes, the yes, you on know, Shabbat. on Shabbat, right? On Shabbat, on Shabbat right? That's how we do. That's how we get us. Yeah. Believe me, as an eyewitness, I'm telling you that he will pick up. Where did you go? Uh, where did you buy these vegetables? Oh, I went to that store. Oh, that store is very expensive. <laughs> I go to La Hacienda. You know, you know La Hacienda, right? Okay, it doesn't matter. All the ladies of the community go there. Okay? <laughs> Not far from here. No, oh, they have great prices. You go there, right? No, I go there. Okay, you go there, right? Hazan, I go there. My wife goes there too. I go if she sends me. If she doesn't ask me to get anything, I don't go. I'm a good listener. Yeah, that's it. Yes, yes. You understand? So suddenly the yes takes something small. It's like a drama in a person's life. What the yes wants to do to our life? He wants to create as many roadblocks or as many uh, 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 walls that don't allow us to proceed in life. And that's why every day we pray to Akadosh Baruch Hu, God, save me. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, save me? Give me the strength to overcome. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He never gets tired. Mm. He comes to visit me daily. No vacations. 
Daily he comes. True. You're a sadiq, so maybe you're off the hook. But to me, he comes daily. And sometimes we go wrestling match. We go 12 rounds sometimes. Sometimes three rounds. Sometimes he knocks me down in the first round. No one can say, I'm exempt. Mm -hmm. We all have it. Mm -hmm. We just need to know how to charge our batteries of the neshama and how to proceed. And I'll finish with this. Even though that a person is not successful in every war of spiritual nature, even though sometimes we fall, as long as we are able to get up and continue, we are in the right track. Don't despair, because sometimes the Yeserara takes advantage of us feeling down. Oh, I did such a transgression. I, I cursed somebody. I feel so bad. And you feel bad, and you feel sad, and you feel depressed. <coughs> The Yeserara is celebrating. It's a pasuk that we say every day in our prayers. Kinafalti kamti. Even though that I'm falling, I'm down, I'll get up. Ki hoshech Hashem orli. And even when I'm dwelling surrounded by darkness, and I don't mean nine o'clock at night darkness. That means the darkness of the mind. The darkness that a person feels internally, dark. The Pasuk says, Hashem or Li. Hashem becomes my lamplighter. Hashem shows me the way. And that's why Torah learning is imperative. You can pray all day. You can give charity all day. You can do chesed all day. All that is beautiful. But without so, that being supplemented with Torah learning, mm -hmm. that doesn't achieve the, the, the potential that it has. It's like now they tell you, take different vitamins, right? And they tell you, take this vitamin, but if you don't take that other vitamin, that first vitamin will not get absorbed by the body. So they tell you, mix. I don't want to say names so nobody gets ideas. Mm -hmm. But I have a, 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 a formula in my brain. But I'm not going to say it. Okay? So the same thing with the Torah. The Torah becomes the catalyst to enhance our prayers, our charity, our hesed, whatever else we do. Because without a Yehudi learning Torah, all the potential that we have, it doesn't get developed. Remains a sample. Torah helps us expand it and enhancing our godly connection, which is at the end of the day, the purpose of who we are as a nation and as individuals. To sanctify Hashem's names and to be ambassadors of Hashem in the world. This Hiram is for to all the generous sponsors of today's class. Have a lovely day, everybody, and we'll see you for itorah.com. Media hora en español aproximadamente.